I want to welcome Father Joseph to our show, the Jesse and Terry Show. Father Joseph, welcome, my friend. Thank you, Terry. Thank you, Jesse. It's a pleasure to be on your show. It's a pleasure to have you, Father Joseph. And i got to ask you, for those listeners who have no clue, could you tell us, because we don't know about your order, would you give us a little summary about the charism of your religious congregation? Sure. Sure. Um, our our order is called the Mercedarians for short, but the long title yep. <laughs> had several titles. You around eight hundred years, you get several titles. But um, our, our long title is the Order of the Blessed Virgin Mary for the Redem of Mercy for the Redemption of Captive Christians, and that was uh, originally what we were in, entitled. Um, shortened to Our Lady Order of Mercy and Mercedarians, oftentimes. So that is our community, um, Order of Mercy. Uh, www.orderofmercy.org, and um, we were founded in 1218 to ransom Christians who were enslaved to the Muslims at that time. As um, many of us know, a large portion of the Iberian Peninsula, or Spain, was controlled by the Muslims as they had slowly crept up into Christian lands over the centuries. And they actually controlled Spain for 700 years before finally the Reconquista, or they... uh, that Christians were finally able to drive them off of the peninsula. So our our founder was a merchant or a businessman. His name was Peter Nolasco. In those days, um, you know, you did whatever your father did, and he trained you in the family business. And so the family business for him was being a merchant or a businessman. And so he would take his, his merchandise into Muslim territories and other territories and sell his goods. And as he was doing this, as his father had done before him, he he saw the Christians and the plight of the Christians who were under Sharia law at that time, and he saw that so many of them were suffering uh, because they were they were not Muslim and they and they were held down in society and oftentimes were not able to get jobs. They um, they lived in poverty, they lived in hunger, and oftentimes were actually in like a servitude or a captivity, a slavery, and so he wanted to help them. Why? And the first reason was because of their faith. It wasn't because, just because they were suffering. Obviously, they were suffering, but he was concerned because they were going to, to leave the faith of, of the true faith for um, Islam, which of course is maybe has certain aspects of truth within it, but um, it's far from from the truth that God desires for us to live. And so. He began to just himself collect alms and uh, to buy back those Christians who were who were in danger of losing their faith. And very soon, um, others began to follow him. And never desiring to found a religious order, but that was God's desire. He um, and on August the first, twelve eighteen, Our Lady appeared to him, and she appeared to him in white, and she said to him that her her son, our Christ, Christ the Redeemer desired that he found a religious order dedicated to this great work of ransoming Christians in danger of losing their faith. So well, St. Peter in Alaska was, had a great love for our, our Lady, and so he right away did what she asked. Within 10 days, he had everything all worked out. He had spoken to the local bishop, and then he spoke to the king, King James I of Aragon, and really he needed his permission, and King James I gave him our, our shield, which is actually, if you look on our, our website, orderofmercy.org, or um, if you were to see us, we wear we wear a shield on our on our habits that has the the insignia of of the kingdom of Aragon, and you would see that a lot in Barcelona, and that was like our passport, along with the the cross of the of Bar- the Cathedral of Barcelona and the crown, which symbolizes Mary. This was our passport as we went into Muslim territories. It would be our protection that they would know that we were with the king and that to attack us would be a, a declaration of war upon the kingdom. So we would go into Muslim territories, collect alms, and many people were very interested in giving donations and always in the name of Mary. And they gave those those donations, those alms, and we took them to once a year. We took them with two of the best friars who knew the language, who were very shrewd in business. They would go and they would try to buy back as many Christian captives as they could. Wow. Father Joseph, not many of us Catholics know about this order. I feel like I should have known about your order. Jesse, do you have any questions before Father Joseph ends on, on his order and the charism of the order and what they're doing with the Muslims? Father, what year did it start, and who's your founder? Okay, 1218, and our founder is St. Peter Nolasco, 
who was a brother, not a priest. And who, and uh, what crusade was? I know because there was like eight crusades historically. Uh, or was that like the, around the third crusade that the order was founded, or the second crusade? It would seem that that was um, at, during one of the later crusades. I would imagine we weren't directly involved with the crusades. It was our we were we founded as a military order. And then we, we eventually became um, mendicant by privilege, similar to the Franciscans. Okay, let's, defi- let's identify what that means, beggars, right? I mean, for those who don't know what a mendicant is. Is that, is that correct, Father? That's right. It means a beggar, um, so that we beg for our sustenance. We weren't allowed to use anything that we that we begged for. It was Everything was supposed to go for the Christian captives. So, of course, we, we provide for our own sustenance. But for the most part, everything that we had went to, even at times, we were allowed by the Holy See to, to um, actually sell. We were only a religious order allowed to sell chalices and, and even sometimes sacred vestments in order just for the captives because uh, the Holy See saw that as, as uh, you know, the greatest charity to protect someone's faith. Absolutely. What, what an order. Now, Father, are, what countries are, is your order in right now? Are you guys in Egypt where Christianity is pretty tough to live out right now, or what countries are you in? Right. Um, we're in mostly Spanish-speaking countries, and that would be probably why most people don't uh, know of us, mm-hmm. at least in the northern part of the United States. And um, California, we, we have some presence there with our Mexican friars and also our sisters. Um, we're in countries such as, uh, we were actually on the second voyage of Columbus, so we helped to um, settle Argentina, and then also the cathedral in Argentina, and then our friars know the New Holy Father very well, Pope Francis. Argentina, Peru, Chile, um, Barcelona, or uh, uh, Brazil. We're also in um, uh, Venezuela. We're in many of the countries in Central America. We have a very uh, growing population, a growing group of mercenary friars in Mexico. And Spain, of course, we have two provinces there with our, where we were founded in Barcelona. We're also in Italy and India, Africa, and, of course, here in the United States. I, it's for me to really explain to you, um, like, how... I really have to explain to you what, what exactly we do today and how... Yeah, let's, we, let's hear about it and how people can contact you. Go ahead, Father. Sure. Okay, so obviously it started out as a physical ransoming. And so our, our religious order, we, um, we, we were founded to physically ransom Christians who were in danger of losing their faith. And as, as though as, as time went on, thanks be to God, the Christians were able to, to drive the, the Muslims off the Iberian Peninsula. And so there became less and less captivity in that sense. Um, and our religious order was founded um, to protect Christians who were in danger of losing their faith from Saracens and other enemies of our law. That's what our constitutions say. The Saracens are another word for the Muslims. Sure. So it's not just, we weren't just founded just to work against Muslim captivity, but anything that would endanger people from losing, uh, endanger people's faith and keep them from, keep them from the faith. So as, as time went on, we became less and less brothers in a clerical order in the 1300s. So we're more, we became priests, priests, and we also have a, our, our major superiors are able to be ordinaries. And so it became more of more and more of a, a spiritual type of captivity that we saw because there was less and less of the physical ransom. I think the last physical ransom took place in the 1800s. Mm. Um, now, I, we are beginning to see more and more throughout, even in, here in the United States with um, sex trafficking and that sort of thing, we are starting to see more captivity rising and, and slavery coming back, and it's a really sad situation. Mm-hmm. And we have, at times we even have people who, who call us from um, Egypt. I had a call a couple of years ago from somebody who had a relative in Egypt. We directed them to our general house, which could uh, facilitate any kind of help that we could give them um, for a relative who had been captured, captured they said, for, um, for the faith that was captured by, by Muslims. Um, We, of course, do, along with the Trinitarians, who are founded for the same purpose. We collect money and we work to help the the Christians in the Sudan, some of whom are Catholic and some Mm -hmm. of whom are are not. Um, So we we do do that type of work still, and we're very much open to that um, type of work as as things become more and more um, difficult for Christians, especially, I think, in in Europe as as the uh, population of 
of Muslims increases because of not because of war this time, but because of the fact that Christians aren't having children. Yep. Father Joseph, how can people contact you again? Can you give us a website okay. they can learn more about you? W W orderofmercy.org and my email address is vocations at orderofmercy.org. So you can good. always contact me there. And um, we go to a great seminary here in, in Philadelphia, one of the best in the United States for a long time, the St. Charles Borromeo Seminary. Sure yeah. And so we get an excellent education on the Catholic faith, which is very important to us as we work in the United States with those who have lost their faith, particularly because they do not know the faith because they weren't well catechized. Right. And so we want to help the Christians who are losing their faith because they think they know it, but unfortunately they do not. And so they're falling, they're, they're selling their faith for something that is much less, for something that is for materialism or mm -hmm. so many um, sure. for the secular lifestyle. Well, Father Joseph, I want to thank you for sharing that with us. This is a very appropriate show to have you on, and we want to thank you, and may God bless you and your community. And uh, again, we'll we'll keep in touch. Thanks, Father Joseph. Thank you very much, Terry and Jesse. God bless your ministry. God bless you.